Good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be located. And welcome to day three of the 32nd annual GMIS conference. My name is Jeff Rivas, and I'm joined by Ms. Elia Saldana for our tour of duty as we salute science, technology, engineering, math in our nation's uniform services. And don't forget, we're including medicine as a second M now in recognition of the importance of the health sciences. This annual tribute is a cherished tradition at the Great Minds in STEM conference, one originally established in partnership with the Department of Defense to honor the unique nature of the work conducted by these STEM professionals. It's also a chance to acknowledge the important role the STEM and medical fields play in every aspect of our national defense, which you'll hear echoed in the words of our award winners and sponsors. In 2002, this event expanded to include the many agencies under the direction of the Department of Homeland Security after it was created that year. This year, the event is expanding yet again to include the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps, which reports to the Department of Health and Human Services, and NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Commissioned Officers Corps, which falls under the Department of Commerce. Commissioned officers of NOAA and the Public Health Service wear uniforms and carry ranks that are derived from the U.S. Navy. And together with the armed forces and the many civilian agencies that report to DOD and DHS, constitute the uniformed services of the United States of America. What all the civilians and commissioned officers of the uniformed services share in common is a sense of duty to our country and a kinship with our men and women serving around the world defending our nation from adversaries performing humanitarian and disaster relief missions both at home and abroad. Often those adversaries are nation states or terrorist organizations determined to do us and our allies harm. But if we've learned anything in 2020, it's that the biggest threats to our national security can be not only dispassionate, but invisible. The COVID-19 virus has demonstrated how intertwined public welfare and national security truly are. And it highlights how critical our combined uniform services have been and will continue to be as we tackle COVID-19 and prepare for the next global pandemic. It has also underlined once again how important science, technology, engineering, and math are to defending our country from every challenge headed our way. In fact, after we meet the 2020 Albert B. Baez Award winner later in the show, the second M in STEM that we're adding will unquestionably represent medicine. Today's award showcase features the six HENAC Award winners from the Uniform Services, including the Albert Baez Award you just mentioned, as well as the 10 STEM Hero Award winners. Before we meet these outstanding STEM professionals and officers, we have two special messages. First, we're going to hear from the chairman of the Board of Great Minds in STEM. He's a recently retired executive and technical director from Northrop Grumman and a former HENAC Award winner. Please welcome Dr. Juan Rivera. Welcome attendees to the GMIS Salute to STEM in the Uniform Services. A special thank you to the members of the Uniformed Services in the virtual audience today, as well as to the Boeing Company and Lockheed Martin, co-sponsors of this event. We honor not only this year's award winners, but the men and women of our Uniformed Services throughout the year. You do so much more than provide our national security. Whether you're a commissioned officer or a civilian, at one of the many agencies we're honoring at this awards showcase. You are the symbols of excellence and honor that the people of this nation value above all. Your courage, devotion, and sacrifice unify our citizens as they revere the standards to which you hold yourselves. These standards inspire us in these trying times that threaten to weaken our American society. We look to you as trustees of our nation's heart and soul, and we ask that you maintain the constant vigilance against threats from both within and without. The great minds in STEM organization and all of the people of America honor and salute you for who you are and for the service you courageously provide to our country. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you, Dr. Rivera. 
For the past few years, this event has been sponsored by two giants of the aerospace and defense industries. Right now, we're going to hear from the first of these two sponsors, the Boeing Company. Boeing is a founding sponsor of Great Minds in STEM, and they partner year-round with the organization on a variety of K-12 and university programs. Boeing employees have also been among the most active volunteers with GMIS over the years. Representing the Boeing Company today is Mr. Tor Bjorn Sogren, Vice President of International Government Services, BGS. Hello. On behalf of the Boeing Company, it's my privilege to speak to you today. My name is Torben Sjogren, everyone calls me Turbo in the Boeing Company, and I lead international government and defense. I'd like to thank the Great Minds and STEM organizers for inviting me to be with you all today. For over 31 years, Great Minds and STEM has honored the nation's best and brightest, Hispanic, Latina, and Latino engineers, scientists, mathematicians, and technology experts. They remain committed to supporting the academic and career developments of the underserved and underrepresented. It is clear this, remain, this commitment remains strong. Even at a time when the whole world is facing the pandemic, the organizers and the conference have gone forward and continued. On behalf of the Boeing Company, we'd like to thank you for your unwavering pursuit to celebrate and recognize diversity in STEM. Now, as the world continues to face this global pandemic, the conference theme of every challenge, every frontier has never been more appropriate and more important. As you can expect, we in the aerospace industry, we're facing a unique set of challenges with both commercial travel um, slowing, as well as the impacts on how our warfighters war are having to adjust. During these challenging times, diversity is crucial whether it be race, gender, culture, beliefs, diversity of thought, the path forward for our nation and for our industry is through tackling these challenges in new ways and informed by diverse perspectives. The importance of diversity in finding solutions to the challenges we face these days is more important than ever. At Boeing, we recognize the valuable contribution of our Hispanic, Latino, and Latina teammates whose leadership, innovation, and dedication have advanced Boeing and the communities we serve. We're currently celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month and highlighting our teammates who make a daily difference within and outside our four walls. We're sharing stories of our Hispanic and Latino Latina teammates across the company. We know that diverse cultural backgrounds make our company stronger particularly during these challenging times. On behalf of the Boeing Company, I'd like to recognize and congratulate our Boeing honorees who are being recognized at this year's conference, Melanie Weber and Farouan Torres. And I'd also like to urge all of you aspiring STEM engineers and scientists, reach for the stars, and no doubt you'll get there, hopefully, on a Boeing product. Thank you. It makes me proud knowing that I add value to the team. If I'm putting pride into it, the people around me are going to put pride into their work as well. And you're going to build a great product. It's exciting to see my dreams come to you for this jet to take off. Quality is incredibly important to us. There's nothing more uh, important than the safety of the people, the product. And nothing better than watching the air crew wave from the flight deck, taking flight to their new home, just knowing that I had something to do with that. We are a team no matter what. It's a family type of thing. We have to look out for each other because without each other, we can't get this done. It's a good feeling to just know that this plane is going that far and that it's representing everybody out here at the Boeing Company. In every single function, quality, engineering, manufacturing, operations, we all come together to make sure we deliver a safe and reliable product.
Thank you again to the Boeing Company. Okay, let's meet today's honorees, shall we? We're going to begin with our first group of STEM Hero Award winners. These awards were created to recognize individuals who work on highly sensitive or even classified technology that their employers can't exactly brag about, or who demonstrate outstanding leadership and service in underserved communities that go above and beyond the call of duty. Without further ado, here are the first of our 2020 STEM heroes. Carolina Burnett, Civil Engineer, Jacksonville District, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Since she started her career with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Carolina Burnett has proven herself as a leader in the storm and flood risk management planning in the Jacksonville District. Currently, the lead planner on the first ever coastal storm risk management study in Puerto Rico, Ms. Burnett provides support across disciplines for planning studies throughout the Commonwealth. In addition to her contributions in Puerto Rico, she successfully completed the Gasparilla Lee County Coastal Study, and she's completed numerous project information reports following Hurricane Hermione, Matthew, Irma, and Maria, resulting in rehabilitation of federal projects in those regions. Born and raised in Columbia, Ms. Burnett was the first woman in her family to obtain a college degree, graduating with a civil engineer degree in 1998 from the Industrial University of Santander. She later earned a master's degree at the University of North Florida. Sergeant First Class James D. Webb, Division Equal Opportunity Advisor, Headquarters, 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry in Fort Drum, U.S. Army. It would be difficult to find a soldier or civilian with more dedication to STEM mentoring than Sergeant First Class James D. Webb. As a U.S. Army Sergeant, his duties have included cannon crew member, artilleryman, medevac operations NCO, as well as his current position on the Division Equal Opportunity Team. It is his volunteer work as STEM-focused counselor for the Boy Scouts of America, however, for which Sergeant Webb is singularly acknowledged. Sergeant Webb has counseled and mentored youth from underserved communities to earn over 61 NOVA awards, multiple SuperNOVA awards, and 11 school science fair awards. He even took mentoring sessions virtual when COVID-19 quarantine set in. With degrees in criminal justice with emphasis on terrorism and homeland security, and an MBA project management degree, Sergeant Webb is also a youth leader who coaches soccer and baseball in addition to all of his work with Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts. Specialist Dwight D. Monk, Battalion Executive Assistant, Special Troops Battalion, 3rd Infantry Division Sustainment Brigade, U.S. Army. Detroit, Michigan Native Specialist Dwight D. Monk's job as a Battalion Executive Assistant is multifaceted, but every role he undertakes involves using his demonstrable professionalism and impeccable character to further crucial communications to his superiors and to his fellow service members. His responsibilities include ensuring that the command sergeant major, the battalion commander, and the executive officer in the command group are all fully briefed on their admi administrative duties and coordinating the vital soldier family readiness group. Specialist Monk also serves as the total army sponsorship program coordinator for the special troops battalion assisting incoming and outgoing service members who need a sponsor to help them integrate into or smoothly clear the installation. In all of his responsibilities, Specialist Monk displays professionalism and an enthusiastic demeanor while establishing himself as a charismatic future leader. He is currently working towards obtaining his degree in multidisciplinary studies at the University of Texas. Congratulations to our first group of STEM heroes. We'll meet the rest later in the show. Right now, we're gonna shift gears and present our first HENAC honoree to present the award for the most promising engineer with a master's degree in the military. Please welcome Dr. Kevin T. Geis, SES, Director of the Airmen Systems Directorate with the 711th Human Performance Wing at the Air Force Research Laboratory, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. With cybersecurity being a key element of the United States Air Force's contribution to America's national defense, the role played by Captain Flavio Marroquin is critical. As part of the 67th Operations Support Squadron, Captain Marroquin is the Chief of Training at the Cyberspace Wing and is responsible for training and standardization for over 2,000 military, civilians, and contractors. 
Born in Los Angeles, California, to Guatemalan immigrant parents who did not speak English, Captain Marroquin became interested in computers after a fascination with them while playing video games as a teen. Immediately after high school, he enlisted in the United States Air Force as a logistician and was soon deployed overseas. While serving, he took advantage of educational opportunities to complete a bachelor's degree in computer and information science and later a master's degree in cybersecurity. Captain Marroquin quickly stood out at the Air Force Information Network Mission Assurance Center where he helped detect network outages and prevent downtime at bases across the globe. His achievements helped his team earn the distinction for the 2015 Department of Defense Chief Information Officers Team of the Year Award. Commissioned as an officer in 2016, Captain Marroquin was recognized for community involvement with the Military Outstanding Volunteer Service Medal for helping Hispanic children who came from non-English speaking households. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present the award for the most promising engineer, master's degree, military, to Captain Flavio Marroquin. I want to say thank you to the committee for choosing me as an annual awards winner for this award. It really means a lot to me. And at the same time, I want to do some words of encouragement for those 18 year olds about to graduate high school. Uh, I remember when I was in your shoes, I didn't have the grades. My parents couldn't afford uh, college tuition for me. So I took it upon myself and joined the military. Best decision I ever did. Uh, joined the Air Force, started off as a logistician, and then got my schooling done, hard work, and eventually ended up uh, in the STEM career field, in the cybersecurity uh, field, which I, I love, absolutely love, and would not change it for the world. So what I'm trying to get at is make a decision, go at it, work hard, it'll pay off. Thanks. To present the next HENAC Award, please welcome Susie M. Hartzog, Department Head, Naval Information Warfare Center Pacific, United States Navy. Today, I have the distinct honor of recognizing Dr. Carlos Torres for his HENAC Award for Most Promising Engineer in the Advanced PhD category. Carlos came to Niwak Pacific as a smart scholar, and in a relatively short amount of time, he's made incredibly significant impact. Carlos is one of our predominant scientists in the area of novel 2D material-based devices and quantum electronics. Some of the highlights of Carlos's contributions include his dedication in setting up a quantum engineered nano devices laboratory at Niwak Pacific for collaboration with other scientists across our center, the Department of Defense, and with academia. He has two issued patents and six pending patents related to 2D materials and has co-authored over 17 highly prestigious peer-reviewed journal articles. And important to any advanced PhD scientist is their leadership and participation in professional societies. For Carlos, this includes the numerous International Society for Optics and Photonics, or SPIE events, and the Federal Laboratory Consortium, where he was recognized for outstanding technology development for his graphene work. Carlos is a model for paying it forward. He's an outstanding mentor for some of our younger scientists and engineers. He's continually volunteered to help with Hispanic youth in San Diego, particularly in the area of STEM, and is also engaged with the Hispanic professional engineers with one of our local universities. And lastly, on a personal front, you couldn't find someone more excited about the work he's performing or more positive and humble about his everyday contributions. So Carlos, on behalf of all Niwak Pacific, we congratulate you and couldn't be more honored and proud to have you on our team. Congratulations on this well-deserved award. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for this award. It really means a lot to me. So I want to thank, first, the great minds in STEM. Without you, the work that you do is essential to highlighting the work of Latinos and Hispanics in the STEM field. I also want to thank Naval Information Warfare Center Pacific, especially my uh, chain of command with the Communications and Networks Department, and my supervisor, Sarah Loff. And I also want to thank my collaborators at NIWIC Pacific in Hawaii, specifically Richard Ordonez and Cody Hayashi and others. Next, I'd also like to thank the Naval Innovative Science and Engineering, or NICE, research funding uh, agents in uh, NIWIC Pacific 
for giving us funding for basic research, which is essential to the warfighter in the near future. With that, I'd like to also thank my family. So first, my dad, I want to thank you for the work ethic that you instilled upon me day in, day out, going to work, enjoying what you do, motivated me to do a STEM career. Also, I want to thank my mom. Thank you for instilling in me uh, to, to work hard and also to have faith that knowing as long as you do your effort, things will work out. That is essential for a STEM career. And I also want to thank my family in Puerto Rico, as well as in Florida, and my brother in California. And without further ado, I want to thank the next generation of scientists and engineers. Thank you so much. The uniformed services have been well represented among the ranks of HENAC award winners since the first class of honorees in 1989. In fact, the great Rear Admiral Benjamin Montoya of the United States Navy was the very first engineer of the year. We're going to meet four more HENAC award winners later in the show, but first, we want to acknowledge our second co-sponsor of this showcase, the Lockheed Martin Corporation. Lockheed Martin is a founding sponsor of Great Minds in STEM and a host sponsor of the entire 2020 conference. A Lockheed Martin CEO has appeared at this conference for each of the last 15 years, a streak that will continue this year despite the pandemic and a recent change into the Guard in the C-suite. So please welcome the new President and Chief Executive Officer of Lockheed Martin, Mr. James Takelet. Hello and welcome. I am honored to join you for this celebration of service, achievement, and excellence. The National Defense Awards are a special opportunity to recognize those who have dedicated their careers to our military and our nation. So today I am honored to express the gratitude of the 110,000 men and women of Lockheed Martin for those who have served and are serving in our armed forces. As a veteran, I know your unwavering dedication to our country is the foundation of our freedoms. We thank you and your families for your many sacrifices. We will hear the stories of outstanding men and women who have stepped forward and served our nation with distinction. Today's honorees have served at the highest levels of military, government, and American industry. And they have strengthened our national security through their work in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. At Lockheed Martin, we are especially grateful for our men and women in uniform. Their sense of purpose and mission has inspired and shaped the culture of our company for more than a century. Today, one in five Lockheed Martin employees is a veteran. We are proud to count them as colleagues. We know their commitment to integrity, honor, and excellence helps us better serve our customers and our nation. As we take on the threats of the 21st century, we know that our partnerships with organizations like Great Minds in STEM will give our men and women in uniform the tools, capabilities, and support they need to succeed for decades to come. Once again, I thank our honorees for their service and for the commitment to building hope and opportunity for every American. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the program. Great design is timeless, but the future always beckons, opening new doors to new possibilities empowering us to imagine new solutions to the world's most complex challenges. In the future, Lockheed Martin engineers immerse themselves in revolutionary design systems, turning ideas into solutions at speeds we can't even imagine today. Our scientists design groundbreaking materials and define a whole new art of the possible for the solutions we deliver. Our teams work together across space and time, 
guided by cognitive assistants that put our entire legacy at our fingertips. A digital tapestry makes possible a seamless flow of knowledge, connecting us and all our partners. Humans and intelligent machines work side by side in this factory of the future. Artificial intelligence automates testing and accelerates our journey to first flight. Digital twins of our platforms make it possible to sustain and improve them, even after they've left the factory. Integrated solutions are delivered to our customers to safeguard all we hold dear. Our passion for innovation extends to the generation after next. Great design is timeless. At Lockheed Martin, the future is closer than you think. Thank you again to Lockheed Martin. We're gonna get back to our honorees now as we work our way to the 2020 Albert V. Baez Award winner, Captain Mercedes Benitez McCrary of the U.S. Public Health Service. But first, we have a second group of STEM heroes. Let's take a look. Natasha A. Chang, PhD. Hydroacoustics and Data Analytics Engineer, Acoustic Signatures Technology Division, Signatures Department, Puget Sound Detachment, Naval Service Warfare Center, Carter Rock Division. Dr. Natasha A. Chang develops empirical models and experimental methods to study multi-phase flow and hydrodynamic aeroacoustic sound sources to provide guidance to the U.S. Navy on the impact of those sources on far-field acoustic signatures. She is a subject matter expert in acoustics and fluid mechanics applying her expertise to submarine designs that permit the Navy to achieve enhanced vehicle survivability through increased stealth. In her cutting-edge data analytics work, Dr. Chang and her team are training computers to alert submarine operators about the vessel's acoustic posture, enabling them to take action before a potentially dangerous situation. She also makes valuable contributions to applications that predict machine failure. A holder of five degrees from universities, including Dartmouth, MIT, and the University of Michigan, where she earned her PhD, Dr. Chang is also a mentor for the Naval Engineering Education Consortium, where she guides a diverse group of students in the conduct of essential research for the Signatures Department. Technical Sergeant Armando Cabrera, Artificial Intelligence Accelerator Flight Chief, Air Force, MIT Artificial Intelligence Accelerator, U.S. Air Force. Technical Sergeant Armando Cabrera's road to a successful career in the U.S. Air Force was not a simple one. The Air Force initially turned down his application to offer his training school, but the Los Angeles-born Cabrera enlisted anyway after he graduated from USC with a B.S. in Mechanical Engineering. Sergeant Cabrera worked his way up the ranks to become the non-commissioned officer in charge of the U.S. Air Force MIT Artificial Intelligence Accelerator one of two enlisted airmen in the Air Force developing artificial intelligence for warfighters, Sergeant Cabrera is building and teaching a data analytics course for cadets at the Air Force Academy. His research focuses on applying artificial intelligence to multimodal synthetic aperture radar images. Selected to be the first enlisted airman to attend the Education with Industry program with Amazon, an honor historically reserved for officers, Sergeant Cabrera was also the first Department of Defense member to attend Amazon's Machine Learning University. Luis A. Rodriguez, Project Lead, Prototype Integration Facility, Aviation and Missile Center, Combat Capabilities Development Command, U.S. Army Futures Command, for over eight years, Mr. Luis A. Rodriguez has served as an exceptional project lead, simultaneously managing multiple programs spanning seven aviation project management offices and multiple government organizations. 
His duties have included executing multi-million dollar contract efforts while managing a team of engineers tasked with assuring the highest quality deliverables. As a subject matter expert for rotary wing aircraft, such as the UH-60 Blackhawk and the CH-47 Chinook helicopters, Mr. Rodriguez coordinates all aspects of business development for the prototype integration facility. His wide, multi-platform customer base consists of numerous Department of Defense organizations and project offices to provide support to our warfighters in an emerging business base valued at over $100 million. Originally from Bayamon, Puerto Rico, where he ran his own construction company before applying for a government engineering position, Mr. Rodriguez earned his Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering from the Polytechnic University of Puerto Rico. Congratulations again! We'll meet the final group of STEM heroes in just a few minutes. Right now, we have a special message from one of Great Minds in STEM's newest board members. Cedric T. Wins is someone who represents better than almost anyone the critical relationship between the defense of our nation and the STEM fields. He is a recently retired U.S. Army Major General, and in his final post, he served as the first commanding general of the newly created U.S. Army Combat Capabilities Development Command. CCDC has the mission to lead in the discovery, development, and delivery of the technology-based capabilities required to make our soldiers more lethal so they can defeat our adversaries and return home safely. Cedric is going to talk more about Great Minds in STEM's long partnership with the Department of Defense before presenting our next HENAC Award for Professional Achievement in the Military. Please welcome Mr. Cedric T. Wins. Great Minds in STEM has developed several strategic partnerships with the Uniformed Services over its 32-year history. The four branches of the military are regular sponsors of this conference, as have many of the agencies that report to the Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security. And they support scholarships, K-12 programs, and the annual College Bowl. These critical partnerships extend beyond the conference as well, as Great Minds in STEM teams up with multiple entities from the Uniformed Services to deliver programming across the country year-round. The latest example of this was last year's U.S. Army design competition held in the University of Texas El Paso Sun Bowl, where the top 10 teams from historically black colleges and universities and minority serving institutions competed and the top four received cash prizes. These partnerships work because both the Uniformed Services and Great Minds in STEM share not only a mission to keep America technologically strong, but a rock solid belief that the best and frankly the only way to do that is to empower Americans in our underserved communities, to rise and become leaders in the STEM fields. Tonight's honorees remind us how potent that formula truly is. Before I get to our next award winner, I'd like to send a special message to our men and women serving our country around the globe. Thank you for all you do to keep us free. Your service and sacrifice is not lost on tonight's audience or on our award winners. These world-class STEM professionals work every day to ensure you remain the best equipped and most technologically advanced fighting force in the world. One of those world-class STEM professionals is Miguel Rivera, Director of the Integrated Air and Missile Defense Technical Authority. Miguel represents the Missile Defense Agency as the technical authority for air and missile defense engineering and integration activities across the Department of Defense. He leads over 100 government, contract support, and industry personnel of various disciplines to enable joint capabilities that span a number of functional areas. These include engineering analysis, modeling and simulation, testing interface definition and control, and technical requirements allocation. The criticality of this work cannot be overstated as it focuses on addressing advanced air and missile threats, including the ability to detect, filter, and track current emerging missile technologies like the next generation hypersonic weapons currently developed across the globe, 
Mr. Rivera joined the Missile Defense Agency after 26 years with the Navy, where he led combat and weapon control systems integration within the Naval Sea Systems Command, among numerous other leadership positions. He has amassed nearly 30 combined years of experience working within the Department of Defense in various systems engineering, acquisition, and program management positions. Miguel gives back to his community through his participation in the Hispanic Employment Program, Hispanic Association at the Missile Defense Agency, supporting various fundraising events and STEM recruitment activities. Having received numerous awards for his work in helping protect our nation, Miguel has been recognized for his substantial technological contributions and advancements and impacts across the Department of Defense, academia, and industry. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present the award for Professional Achievement Level 2 Military to Miguel Rivera. Good afternoon, Great Minds in STEM. My name is Miguel Rivera, and I'm the Director for Integrated Air Missile Defense and Missile Defense Agency. Um, I'm an electrical engineer by trade. I'm a proud Hispanic American by birth, and I'm truly humbled to have uh, been chosen to uh, receive the, the HANEC Professional Achievement Award. Um, you know, I grew up in a time where there wasn't a whole lot of uh, technology electronics. You know, we didn't have cell phones, personal computers, smart TVs. You know, I grew up with a, a single TV with five channels. Um, but there was one person that kind of made a difference in my life, and I wanted to thank her, and that's my uh, high school math teacher, Miss Ramser. Um, she was the one that kind of saw something in me. Um, she knew what my parents couldn't afford to send me to college, so she kind of helped me out. And by the time I graduated high school, uh, I had a scholarship, uh, and I was accepted in Tennessee Tech University uh, for an engineering program. So this is really to her, and I'll have other things in, in the other video, but uh, I appreciate it, um, and thanks, and have a great conference. To present the award for Professional Achievement One Military, please welcome past HENAC Award winner, Mr. Jose Sanchez, SES, Deputy Director of Research and Development, and Deputy Chief Scientist for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Over her 16-year career, Dr. Alicia Rubinsky has been a distinguished member of the computer science and data analytics communities. Her supervisors have called her an asset to the nation. For the past three and a half years, she has been a part of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Information Technology Laboratory at the Army Engineer Research and Development Center and has made significant scientific contributions to numerous programs of national importance. Dr. Rubinsky holds a bachelor's degree in mathematics a Master's in Mathematics and Computer Science from Emory University, and a doctorate from the University of South Carolina. Dr. Rubinsky's dissertation work focused on applying mathematical and computer science principles to social science problems by incorporating human behavior in mixed human agent societies. Dr. Rubinsky has since become a leader in the areas of artificial intelligence and machine learning in the Mercurial Department of Defense data analytics field Dr. Rubinsky has remained steadfast in solving difficult problems that have stymied other computer scientists. The impact of her work and her technical leadership have helped several military programs move forward with integrating advanced data analytics that utilize machine learning and AI into all important decision-making processes at multiple strategic levels. As a certified project management professional, Dr. Rubinsky has also successfully managed numerous multi-agency projects. She is the lead or contributing author of four book chapters and 17 refereed proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present the award for professional achievement level one military to Dr. Alicia Rubinsky. I am honored to accept this prestigious award. It is truly incredible to be recognized for a hard-earned career that I absolutely love. Choosing a career in STEM opens a door to a wonderland in which your creativity, your curiosity, your fascination with the world around you can take root. By serendipitous sequence of events, the doorway to my career in STEM was a military one, and I find myself looking back at an 18-year career in research and development of capabilities ranging from modeling, sociopolitical unrest, to investigating the integration of artificial intelligence into human cognitive processes. STEM-based research and development in the military domain offers opportunity for perpetual learning and awareness of state-of-the-art technology and capability, 
for the honorable mission of protecting our service members, enabling their work, and building a safer, better world. Congratulations, Dr. Drovinsky. Before we get to our final honorees, we want to remind our audience to visit gmisconference.org to view the personal thank you videos both our HENAC Award and STEM Hero Award winners have submitted. And don't forget to visit the GMIS YouTube channel to view this and the awards showcases from earlier this week. And technicamagazine.com to read the extended profiles of all 2020 honorees. We have our final HENAC Award of this showcase coming up in just a minute. But first, we have one last group of STEM heroes to present. Please enjoy. Jennifer Lopez, PhD, Research Mathematician and Team Lead, Sensors Director at Multi-Domain Sensing Autonomy Division, Sensing Management Branch, U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory, U.S. Air Force. In her current role, Dr. Jennifer Lopez is responsible for defining fundamental research efforts, developing experiments, and managing a 30-member team to assess hierarchical organizational models. As one of only two people in her division studying patterns of life, her work helps the Department of Defense understand the human-machine workflow of small sample sizes. Her research is unique in its approach as she attempts to push the state-of-the-art in autonomy machine learning and artificial intelligence for both DOD and the intelligence community. Dr. Lopez currently helps manage a $10 million per year portfolio while working closely with academia to produce valuable research, including two publications to date and three more currently in progress. With a doctorate from the Air Force Institute of Technology, this daughter of Chinese and Mexican-American parents is a former DOD Science, Mathematics, and Research for Transformation Fellow. She is also a National Institutes of Health grant recipient and Civilian Advanced Degree Placement recipient. Jose M. Miranda, SES, Director, Technology Security and Technology Programs Directorate, Navy International Programs Office, NAVC, U.S. Navy. With the fiscal year budget of nearly $30 billion, NAVC accounts for almost one quarter of the Navy's entire budget and is responsible for the design, construction, delivery, maintenance, and disposal of ships and associated systems. In Jose Miranda's current role, he is responsible for advancing international interoperability within allied navies. In this endeavor, he leads the security cooperation enterprise for the Department of the Navy to build global relationships and safeguard the transfer of U.S. technology responsibilities that require him to work directly with allies, managing a $14 billion portfolio. His office also manages combat system development on 12 new construction ships for five allied navies with up to 19 additional new constructions planned. With a BS in industrial engineering from Wichita State University and an MS from the Florida Institute of Technology, the Peruvian-born Mr. Miranda is an active member of NAVC's Hispanic Employee Resource Group where he's helped increase membership by 30% in the past year. Christine Lozano, Research Civil Engineer, U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. With an MS in Civil Engineering from Laterno University and a BS in Civil Engineering from the University of Arkansas, Ms. Christine Lozano is heavily involved in research to support the nationwide navigation infrastructure through the modeling of structures and materials. In particular, she works on the analysis of hydraulic structures like rocks and dams and research techniques to extend the useful life of these structures. Ms. Lozano's work in the area of fatigue and fracture has contributed to significant cost and time savings on navigation steel structure repairs through an easily installed fiber reinforced polymer patch that she helped develop. The Colombian-born engineer has authored or co-authored several peer-reviewed papers and has also conducted seminars at several universities concerning various topics in her field. Ms. Lozano stays active within her community by providing tutoring, assisting with ESL classes, and through her involvement in a diversity and inclusion committee at her workplace. Captain Eric M. Pratz, Officer in Charge of Advanced Programs Detachment 2, 318th 
Cyberspace Operations Group, Nellis Air Force Base, U.S. Air Force. After earning his bachelor's degree in computer science from the University of Texas, Captain Eric M. Pratt joined the United States Air Force as an enlisted airman. After five years, he rose to the rank of Staff Sergeant and attended the Air Force's Officer Training School. After receiving his commission in 2016, he completed further technical training in cyberspace operation and was assigned the mission of integrating cyberspace operations into military training exercises run by the Air Force Warfare Center. His leadership was pivotal in providing hands-on experience dealing with modern cybersecurity threats to members of all four branches of the military, as well as representatives from multiple allied nations. Teams under his direction continue to train almost 6,000 personnel annually. Captain Pratt currently oversees the development and integration of new cyber tools to address threats outlined in the National Defense Strategy and the effectiveness of training provided to joint and coalition forces. Congratulations to the entire class of STEM heroes. To present the next HENAC Award, please welcome Brigadier General Kimberly Colleton. Commander and Division Engineer of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Transatlantic Division. It is my honor and privilege to be here today to present the HENAC Award for Executive Excellence in the Military Category to Mr. John D. Marino. John grew up in rural California and graduated from both Stanford University with a degree in Civil Engineering and MIT with a Master's Degree in Building Technology. He has distinguished himself over a 28-year career as a Department of the Army civilian, serving in challenging and diverse positions overseas, in Europe, and the Middle East, as well as at home, leading up to his current position as the Regional Business Director for the Corps of Engineers, South Pacific Division. He is responsible for work across the states of California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, and parts of Colorado and Texas. In his senior executive position, Mr. Marino oversees what amounts to a $10 billion engineering and construction program. He's tasked with leading and managing the strategic direction, technical engineering support, and financial operations, as well as supporting the development of matrixed and cross-functional teams supporting military construction, civil works, and interagency support to agencies like the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Homeland Security. John is fully dedicated to the recruitment and retention of our diverse workforce across the Army, and he's been highly active in mentoring, especially with our Hispanic graduates in engineering and science disciplines. Congratulations, John. It is my honor and privilege to present this award for executive excellence to you today. I'm a proud member, a STEM professional, a civilian with the Department of Army, the U.S. Army's Corps of Engineers. For 28 years, I've belonged to this organization and I take great pride in stating the vision of the Corps, engineering solutions for the nation's toughest challenges. Key enablers early in my career that have allowed me to grow in this organization, I was able to complete my technical advanced degrees as well as my professional uh, registration very early in my career. I also seized upon the many opportunities that I saw for leadership. Um, I became a supervisor very early in my career and I was not afraid to move and take on uh, new positions as they presented themselves. Pursue self-development, don't be afraid of change and embrace the new frontier that change brings. Congratulations, Mr. Moreno. A few scheduling notes before we get to our final award of the day. First, we hope you join us tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific as GMIS honors HENAC award winners on the frontier of science and technology, including the 2020 Scientist of the Year, Dr. Alfonso Davila of NASA. And then on Friday, we'll be back with a legacy of HENAC excellence as we honor our final members of the class of 2020, including Jesse Ortega of General Motors, our engineer of the year. For over the 1,300 university students attending the conference this year, you have the Student Leadership Awards tomorrow at 2 p.m. 
And finally, all registered conference attendees are invited to the virtual mixer immediately following the premiere of this awards showcase. Enter through the conference portal at gmisconference.org. And now, for the final award of the showcase, the Albert V. Baez Award. This award was established in 1995 to honor engineers and scientists who have demonstrated exceptional technical achievements and service to humanity. The award is named after Mexican-American physicist Albert V. Baez, a pioneer of X-ray optics and co-inventor of the X-ray microscope. Dr. Baez is probably most famous to the general public for being the father of folk singer Joan Baez, but his work as a scientist, educator, and humanitarian touched so many people around the world. He spearheaded curriculum reform in impoverished countries for the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. And he continued to help poor villages across Latin America through his charity, Vivamos Mejor, until his passing in 2007. This is one of three HENAC awards that is not given out every year and is reserved for individuals who demonstrate both technical leadership and action in ways that honor the legacy of Dr. Baez. As you'll see, the 2020 recipient of this award more than fits the bill. To present the 2020 Albert V. Baez Award, please welcome Richard Carmona, retired Vice Admiral and 17th Surgeon General of the United States. Hello. I'm at a uh, virtual Surgeon General Symposium right now, but I'm taking a break from the meeting with the other Surgeons General to do something very important to me. And that is to introduce Captain Mercedes Benitez McCreary, an officer who I've had the privilege to work with for decades and one who is uh, fortunate to have been nominated and to receive the Albert Baez Award as a great mind in STEM. So there's so much I can tell you about uh, the captain. Um, I can tell you that I have met few people as passionate, knowledgeable, caring, and focused on mission than her. She has led a life of selfless service, being deployed all over the world, but she's never forgot the common natures. Just being a mom, being a family, reaching out to the underserved. She's an extraordinary individual with a great scientific mind who again does everything she can to elevate those behind us so that they can also appreciate the extraordinary opportunities within the STEM field. So I want to introduce her to you. I want to extend a virtual COVID free hug to her, thank her for her dedication and years of service in the US Public Health Service. We're all better for having been around her for all these years. And I can tell you for many years, People would say, well, Captain McCreary works for you. Well, technically she does, but often I felt I worked for her because you don't want to be in her way when she has a mission. She gets things done. Captain Mercedes Benitez McCreary is a board certified bilingual speech language pathologist specializing in geriatric care, dysphagia rehabilitation, and the diagnosis and treatment of military patients with traumatic brain injuries. She's a leading global health science policy expert specializing in public health and disease prevention. The daughter of Puerto Rican parents and one of eight children, her journey has taken her from the New York borough of the Bronx to the upper echelons of the U.S. Public Health Service. For the past 19 years, she has worked with several surgeons general to advocate for expanded focus on minority health issues afflicting underserved communities and to support the service's response efforts in fields following disasters like Hurricanes Katrina and Maria. Captain Benitez McCrary made history in 2016 when Surgeon General Vivek Murthy appointed her Chief Professional Officer of Therapist Rehabilitation, making her the first Latina to ever hold a position that senior at the USPHS. Her already history-making tenure was scheduled to draw to a close in March of 2020, but as it did for so many of us, the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic consumed the U.S. Public Health Service. Captain Benitez McCrary rallied the officers and resources of the USPHS and began deploying teams to the hardest hit regions, especially in Native American communities and reservations. Today, Captain Benitez McCrary and her husband and fellow doctor, Victor, who spearheaded her nomination for this award, live in suburban Maryland and have two adult children. Hey, Mom, it's me, Max. Hey, honey, it's your honey from 30 years. 
Hey mom, it's Francesca. And we wanted to congratulate you on your Dr. Albert Baez Award. You deserve it. We are so proud of you and you inspire us every day and we are so honored that you got this award. And sweetheart, I know you can do it. I'm looking for 30 more years and I'm honored to be your partner. Love we, you. We love you. We love you. So please give her a rousing, rousing applause for a well-deserved award that I'm sure she's gonna to continue to impress all of you as she moves into the future, retires from the public health service and continues to make contributions that will benefit mankind. Mercedes, you make me proud. Thank you for all you've done and for all you've done for me personally as Surgeon General of the United States. Hasta luego. Great Minds in STEM is proud to honor Captain Mercedes Benitez McCrary with the 2020 Albert V. Baez Award for technical excellence and service to humanity. Good evening. Hello. I am so humbled and proud to accept the 2020 Dr. Albert Baez Award. He was a greater than life humanitarian, an accomplished physicist, a husband, and a father who served his community his entire life, a true Latino with unwavering principles, ethics, and faith. I ask you to allow me to divert my thoughts to the how, where, when, and whys of how I am coming before you at this moment as the 2020 award winner. Let's consider the how. People often ask me, how are you to know what to do, when to do it? How did you plan your career? your education, your goals. I respond to these questions with my favorite spiritual readings. To whom much is given, much will be required. This wisdom, you know, it means we are held responsible for what we have. If we have been blessed with a lot, like with talents, health, knowledge, wealth, and time, it is expected that we work and serve to benefit others. Now, additionally, the parable of the talents. In the parable, a master who is leaving his house entrusts his property to his servants. One servant receives five talents, the second receives two, and the third receives only one. This reminds us that success is a product of our hard work and God always gives us everything. We need to do what he called us to do. Additionally, the parable reminds us that all of us are not given the same assignment, but we are expected to complete our jobs with what we are given. In conclusion, it is my privilege and honor to be a commissioned officer of the United States Public Health Service. And so I respectfully accept the 2020 Albert, Dr. Albert Baez, award with sincere gratitude and humility thank you gracias congratulations again captain benitez mccrary and to all the award winners honored here today we want to thank you all for joining us today and we'll see you again tomorrow and Friday for the final two award showcases of the 2020 GMIS Conference. Goodbye, everyone.